and Mary's going to come and share with us now. Thank you, Mary, uh, on our next Fruit of the Spirit. Thank you, Mary. Good morning, church. Good morning. Once again, it's a great privilege to stand before you and before God. I really want to appreciate the man of God, Pastor Trevor and Pastor Riandro, for giving me this great opportunity to share the good news with you. Before we do that, I say a prayer. Father, once again, we thank you for this wonderful day. It is a great privilege and honor for us to meet together. Father, we thank you for your words. We thank you for what you have done in our lives. You have gathered us from different places and countries and you brought us in one place so that we can be one. Your work is so beautiful and we will always appreciate you. We ask you to bless those who are hearing in Facebook and also online, in YouTube. Father, bless them. Bless those who are in, not in because they are not well. We ask you to heal them. Those who are going through different situations and circumstances, we commit them to you, Lord, that you may meet their needs according to your riches and glory. And as we share your word, Lord, speak to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, as Trevor said, we are going through the fruits of the Spirit. And today we are going to look at the goodness of God. Brothers and sisters, what is the goodness of God? The Bible defines the goodness of God in two ways. One has to do with the character of God, and the other focuses on his words. And in the book of Psalms 119 verse 68 captures both. And he says, you are good and you do what is good. The first half of the verse, you are good, focuses on the fact that God, by nature, he himself is good. He is everything that God should be. The ideal person, the sum total of all perfection, there are no defects, no contradiction in him, and nothing can be added or removed in his nature to make him any better. He is excellent, he is infinite, a degree that possesses everything desirable every good quality and an immeasurable value. Brothers and sisters, the goodness of God means that God is the final standard of good. And all that God is does, and does is worthy of approval. There is nothing in this earth that can be compared or be measured to God. He is one of a kind. He's so special in everything he does. God, I mean God's goodness is infinite. The infinite of God includes both his eternity and his immensity. Isaiah 40, verse 28, 
talks about his greatness and he says like this, do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He will never grow weary. He will never grow tired. And his understanding, no one can fathom. Brothers and sisters, the understanding of our God, no one can fathom. He's so powerful, yet he is so simple that he, we, he tolerates us. He condones us. His love cannot be compared to anything that has ever been seen or heard by anyone. But how do we see the true character of a person by his works? You see, the second part of God's goodness concentrates on what he does. Our God extends his goodness to others. He did not keep it to himself. He's not selfish. His nature is kind. He's generous. generous. He's benevolent. He demonstrates good will towards his people. And he takes great pressure in making men happy. Because God is good, brothers and sisters, he wants us to have what we need. It to be, make us happy, and he sees to it that we have it. You see, God gives us our heart's desire, brothers and sisters. And there is no words that can be able to describe our God. And the Bible confirms it by, in the book of Psalms 37. And it says, take the right in the Lord and he will give you your heart desire. Every good thing we do enjoy today or hope to enjoy flows from him. And no good thing has ever existed, will ever exist that does not come from his hand. James chapter 1 and verse 17 continued to say that every good and perfect good gift comes from above. Brothers and sisters, nothing, nothing good can come from this world. Nothing good. The Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from God. The Bible also says, 80, Psalms 84, verse 11, that the Lord does not withhold any good thing to those who work upright. You see, the goodness of God is for those who work upright. That's why Jesus told the young rich ruler in the book of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 17 that no one in this earth that is good except And even a man as godly as Paul, as the Apostle Paul, sorry, 
he said that in his natural being there was no good thing and we have to admit it. We have to admit it, brothers and sisters, that we cannot produce anything good. That is in Romans chapter 7 and verse 18. And he says, for in him, I mean, he says, for I know that God itself does not dwell in me. That's Paul saying, that this in my sinful nature, for I have desired to do what is good, but I cannot do it. You see, Paul, when he received Jesus, he wanted to do good with his strength and ability. But he could not. For nothing good can come out of man except it is given from above. And if there is any good thing we do, it comes from God. And we are, for we are incapable of doing it ourselves. Brothers and sisters, there are objections to God's goodness. Of course, not everyone agrees that God is good. And it should not be a surprise that his goodness is being called into question. It was probably the first attribute that was attacked by attacked in human history when Satan went to the Garden of Eden and told Eve that God was not good. He implied that God was less than good for denying them the delicious fruit from the Garden of Eden, that forbidden tree. Genesis 3 verse 1. Men have been challenging God's goodness. Even since, how can a, pra a good God allow evil in his world? How can he permit diseases, pain, suffering, poverty, violent war, and even bloodshed? They argue either he is not good or he does not have the power to stop it. So brothers and sisters, it is very hard to understand how these things happen or where they come from. And quite frankly, it, we will never understand. God tells us that his power are, is higher than ours. His ways are higher than our ways, and his thoughts are bigger and higher than our thoughts. Isaiah 55 verse 8. Therefore, we cannot expect to understand everything. We do know, however, that God is not the author of evil. He's not the author of sin. James 1 verse 13 says that when one is tempted, let no one say that God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone? So evil does not come from God. John 1, first letter of John 1 verse 5 says, God is light and in him there is no darkness. God does not have any darkness 
or hidden agenda. He has revealed himself to us through his son, Jesus Christ. That's how God good God is, his goodness. We also know that God, in his sovereign good pressure, created man with good with free will, his ability to choose good or evil. The first man chose evil of his will, and this affected all God's creation. All the heartaches and suffering in this world, brothers and sisters, is as a result of the choice that was chosen by the first man. The consequences of living in a world affected by sin. What can we do? Or what can God do? The only way, brothers and sisters, to remove evil from the world is to deny man their freedom. And you all know that nobody wants that. Nobody wants to live in bondage or incapacitated, that they are incapable of doing their own free will. So, one thing we need to realize is that God knew that man is going to deny him. But he also knew that creating man was the best way to demonstrate his goodness of his person, the goodness of his person and a perfection of his nature. So he never regretted or regretted making man. Romans 8 encourages us with these words. Chapter 8, verse 28 says that God causes all things to happen or to work for the good of those that love him. So no matter how much evil we may see here on earth, his goodness still exists and he's so powerful and he's still working in his people. Brothers and sisters, it is so difficult most of the time to accept that things will work for the good of those that love God, especially when you are going through great trials. If God is so good, why did he let this happen to me? The cause of our dilemma, brothers and sisters, is our failure to understand what is truly good for us. We may have the notion that our ultimate good would be to have things go smoothly for us. To do anything we please, knowing comfort, convenient health, and success. But God is good, or God, but God's good goal for us is for us to be like His Son. You see, His main purpose. Is for us to be like him. Yes, we are blessed with everything that he has created. We have been given that power and authority. But his main purpose is for us to be like him. That was his aim and his plan when he was creating man. As 
inheritors of God. We must share God's goodness with others. We ma well, many people are weary and losing hearts, living in doubt. Why? Because of what's happening. The world has changed. Galatians 6 verse 9 tells us, let us not become weird in doing good. For at the proper time, brothers and sisters, we shall receive a reward. Jesus did not lose heart. He did not grow weary and doing good. When we do good, we are following our Lord Jesus Christ. We are becoming his sons because we eager what he does and we do it. His goodness. The Bible says that God never stopped loving us. He tolerates our unbelief, our rebellious, and he still works on us to make sure that we are transformed to his, him or to his will. The Bible says that when we do good, we are demonstrating the Lord's goodness in action. We are showing the character of our Lord Jesus Christ, and he did it. He said that if we obey him, we will do more than he even did. That is his goodness. Brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us to be right, to let our light shine, that the world may see our light and glorify our Father in heaven. When we are being right or doing good in our places of work, in our homes, wherever we are, even here in church, we are demonstrating God's goodness. And by doing so, we are glorifying our good God in heaven. We need to know, and uh, today I read an article that told us that God's goodness is so rich in us that there is nothing. You cannot be you without his goodness. There is nothing you can be able to do. And think about it for a minute. If God removes his goodness in you, what will be left of you? There is a song we used to say that if God removes his breath in you, what will you be? You see, God created man in a way that, and I, I was talking to somebody today this morning, he put all his mind in us when he was forming us. He showed us Meaning, you know, when you are doing or drawing something you love, that's how God did to us. He created us with love. Great love in that image that you have now. He's filled his goodness and all his textures in us. Then he did not stop there. He gave us his breath. The Bible 
Bible says, after he formed man, he did not leave a man there as an image. He gave us his breath. Whenever you walk and you feel so strong in yourself, see the goodness of God in you. And God wants us to see that we need to see ourselves as we see God. We need to walk and do and remember that it is because of God that I have achieved that, that I am able to do that. His goodness in us. That you can raise your hand, that you can lift your leg, that you can see and you can even talk. Even without all those, God is still good. And the best man ever, living, immortal, or mortal, living in us, he is still the good God in us. Hope you are blessed. God bless you. I'm going to leave there. I know I've spent so many times. I'm going to call to him. So if I said to you, tell me the name of a character in the Bible who was good, the answer is, Jesus said no one. When they suggested to Jesus, Mary said, when they to Jesus, you're a good teacher, he said, hey, who are you calling good? There's only one who's good, and that is God. So as Mary has explained, we are not inherently good but we are called to do good. <clears throat> so I thought of it, I tried to think of a character in the Bible who did good. And we're going to watch a little video <clears throat> about him doing good. But, and there's a big but in this man's life, that after we watch the video, <clears throat> will remind us that even this man we couldn't say to him he was a good man, but he did do good in the particular incident we're going to see on this little video. Thanks, Alex. Gideon, the children of Israel versus the Midianites. The Midianites have destroyed our crops. Yeah! They've raided our town. Yeah! And for seven years, we've taken it. But today we fight. We fight for our freedom. Yeah! 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 Here's the thing. God says there's too many of you. What? Look, guys, it's great that you came out, that you all want to be heroes. But the fact is, if 22,000 Israelite soldiers leap into battle, well, it won't really seem like a miracle when we win. Anyone who wants to leave, go for it. God, I really hope you know what you're doing. That's a start, I guess. Let's, um, all have a drink. You, you, and you. You're in. Everyone else can take off. Okay, here's the plan. Hey, the Israelites. Yeah, all 300 of them. Ooh, we're so scared. We're running in fear. You'll be serious once you hear our music. Why? Is it that bad? No, it's miraculous. <laughs> Stop it! Get away from me! I don't know what's going on! You! Get away from me! OMG-D, 
I think it's working. Don't stop. The Midianites fled the land, and Gideon led for 40 years of peace until the Israelites started sinning again, lost God's favor, got conquered, turned back to God, and started the cycle of judges all over again. grandson can rule over us. No, said Gideon, I won't be your king, and my son won't be king either. Only the Lord is your ruler. But I will ask you to do one thing. Give me all the earrings you took from the enemy, and the, because the enemy's soldiers had worn gold earrings. And the Israelite soldiers replied, of course we will give you the earrings. Then they spread out a robe on the ground and tossed the earrings into it. And the total weight of this gold was nearly 20 kilograms. In addition, there was gold from the camel's ornaments and from the beautiful jewelry worn by the Midianite kings. And Gideon also took this and the purple robes. And Gideon returned to his home in Orpah and had the gold made into a statue, which the Israelites soon started worshipping. They were unfaithful to God, and even Gideon and his family were trapped into worshipping the statue. I didn't realise Gideon ended up doing the wrong thing in his life, but he did. He tragically did, didn't he? And in doing that, he led the whole people of Israel actually astray. And we've got that choice this week. Do we do the right thing, the good thing, or do we do the wrong thing? Do we show kindness? Uh, do we show goodness? Do we allow the, the fruit of goodness to grow in our lives? It's a matter of our choice. Just like kindness is a matter of the choices that we face and what we do, isn't it? And it's the same with goodness. It's about the choices that we make this week that we choose to do good. We choose to show the goodness of, of God through our lives. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for the reminder that you are a good God. And Lord, we... we we depend on your goodness. We are only here, Lord, because of your goodness. We are only here because of who, you, because you are just inherently good. And everything about you flows from your goodness. And Lord, you call us to grow goodness in our lives too. And so, Lord, by your spirit, by your transformed life in us, Grow this goodness, we pray, that we might do good things. We might do the right things. We may choose to go the right way as we go through this week. We ask for Jesus' sake. Amen. So we're going to sing.